What's up entrepreneurs? Today I want to show you how to use Shopify as a web developer. So here we are in Shopify. I've created a store. Now I want to be able to customize it. Right now I have the, the first starting out theme which is called Debut. And uh, you can look at it here. We want to be able to change this completely with HTML and CSS. How do we do that? First, we need to download something called ThemeKit. ThemeKit is Shopify's own tool to be able to control Shopify from the terminal. So you can download the code for your e-commerce platform and you can also edit the code in your favorite text editor. Shopify has created a small tutorial for this and I have put the link in the description. So to install ThemeKit, you can do it either with this curl command, which you put in your terminal, or you can do it with homebrew. Uh, homebrew is something I definitely recommend that you download and install if you're a web developer. Because with homebrew you can install packages extremely easily. To install it you go to this website, which I also have in the description, and you just paste this whole command into your terminal. Once you have homebrew installed, you can just uh, copy this command into the terminal like that and I already have it downloaded so I'm, I'm gonna terminate this and you copy paste the next command which is brew install theme kit after you've done this you have theme kit installed now you have to create an API access point so that theme kit can modify your code an API access point is basically something that lets your computer or other computers change and modify something on a remote database. This is how we create an API access point. We go into apps, manage private apps, and generate API credentials. Here you can write it your name, um, test store in my case, and you don't need a contact email. And if you want, you can enable all access here if, you're, if you want to change all aspects of your uh, website with code. Okay, now we have changed all fields to read and write or read access if read and write is not available. Then we can click save. So now Shopify is generating an API key for ThemeKit uh, to be able to modify the code base on the database. So now we have the API key. Let's download the theme and start changing it. And you download the theme by copying this command, theme figure, password, and so on. You copy this command into um, where you want to download your files. So create a folder where you want to download your code. So after you created your folder, just navigate to that folder in the terminal. I have a trick. So after I write cd, which is navigate to that folder in terminal, I can just drag the folder here and uh, terminal automatically finds the path name for that folder. So now, as you can see, I am in the Shopify test folder and I can use the command that ThemeKit gave me in this uh, tutorial. So now I've copied the command that ThemeKit gave me and we have to write in the password, the store name and your ID. And you get these from here, from the API key. And the things you need is the password, which is generated here in your API key. So you just copy paste this password. And, oops. Like that. And then you need the store URL, which is let's start a business.shopify.com here. And then you need your theme ID. You get that from clicking customize in the first page of Shopify. Click customize. Then in the URL you get this number, which is the theme ID. 
So you just copy paste this theme ID. And boom, now you have configured your theme kit. And then you can download the code base. And you do that by writing this command, theme download. So now we have downloaded the code base for the Shopify website. And you can see it here. Here are all the files which make up your store. And you can see it uses the extension .liquid. And that's because Shopify uses a programming language called Liquid. We can open this up in your editor, in your favorite text editor. And I love to use this command with Atom, where you navigate to your folder and then you can just write Atom dot which opens up all the code for that folder. So what do we do if we want to change this code? Well, first of all, we have to uh, make it so that ThemeKit watches the folder, which means that if we make any changes in the folder and in the files and save them, then ThemeKit will update the website automatically. So we do that by just writing theme watch. Now Think is, is watching for file changes, and if we change something, it will change the website. So what's the advantage of using this? Well, let's say we want to change this header, and we don't like the search icon, because our, maybe our website is really small, and we don't need people to be able to search. And as you can see, in the customizable section of Shopify, we can't remove that search icon. Uh, we have to change this in the code. So let's find the header in our code here in Atom. Our Shopify folder is organized into assets, config, layout, locals, sections, snippets, and templates. Assets are stuff like images, JavaScript files, CSS files. Our header won't be there. The config is all the colors and all stuff which sets the style over the entire website, we don't really need to change here. In the layout folder, we have the theme.liquid file. And this is the main page for all sites in Shopify. Theme.liquid is a dynamic page and it changes depending on what page you're on. It's dynamic because you can see it has a variable. And you see it's a variable because you have doubly curly braces. Content for layout, this variable is created when you go into different type of endpoints on your website. If you go to about, then it will render the about template. If you go to catalog, it will render the catalog template. And above the div here, we can see that we're rendering a section called header, and it's header that we want to change. But since we have the section header in the theme file, it means that header is shown in all pages on the website. The header is in the section folder, as you can see. Here we are in the header, and we want to remove the search icon. How do we do that? Well, let's make it easy and just search for search. <laughs> search for search, that's kind of meta. Because of Shopify's customizability, there is a lot of code that it's not being used at the moment. And we can check which settings we have for the header uh, display. Let's click Customize, and then Header. The logo alignment setting is not put in centered, it's put in left. Then we know we have that setting. Uh, so we go back here to Atom and we see that actually this part that we found has the section.settings.alignLogo centered. So if we change anything in this setting, you won't get any effect on the website because we have the setting left. We need to find left, the, the, the part where it says left. Let's continue to click through and see if we can find the left setting. And here we are. So if section.settings.alignLogo equals left, which it is, include search form. So you use include when you want to add a snippet. So search form is a snippet. Um, but we don't want to use this snippet because we want to remove the ability to search on the website. So let's just take this away or comment it out. I'm going to delete it because I'm not going to use it. 
and voila, it's gone. We have removed search from the entire website. That's great. You could not be able to do that if you just used the Shopify normal tools. You have to change the code in order to remove search. Now I want to show you how you create a totally new page, such as an about page. We can start with just duplicating this file, page.liquid. And we can name it page.about, like this. Let's add hello from about to show that we're actually cha making changes. Once you have created that file, you go to pages here, back at Shopify, add page, and you come to this place. And here you have to choose the template for which you want to make your page from. And you see that we ha in template suffix, we have page.about, which is the one that we have created. So let's change the title to about us. And about us was successfully created. We can view this in your online store. And we see that we have created a totally new page. And our changes are right there. Here we can do anything. We have full HTML customizability. Let's remove page.content since we're not using it and add a paragraph. can add the link to homebrew. And this will update automatically. I think that's pretty cool because this gives you total customizability. If you want to create a CSS and change this page, you create a new asset here, new file, aboutus.scss.liquid. Now we have created a file, we need to include it in the theme.liquid file, which is in layout. And this is again like the main uh, page where everything is added. So we include it by first writing the name about.scss and then this pipe thing which is alt7 in the Swedish keyboard and then asset URL pipe style sheet tag. Boom, now we have it included and we can add stuff like a class for the paragraph. Oops. My spelling is not what it used to be. Color red. We can add this as a class to the paragraph. And this should now work. Boom. So we have created a CSS for this page that we have created specifically through HTML and CSS. And here we can do anything, Just we can treat it just like any other website. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what these folders are used for. So template is an entire page and template is basically consisting of sections and snippets which we have right here. So a section that could be something which is just on one page, whereas a snippet is something that is recurring throughout the entire website, such as icons or anything like that. Like this is a section, for example. And we could create a new section very easily. Just write a new folder, image, background, dot liquid. We go here and we can just create any div. Just Hello, I am image background. And now, since we have added it as a section, we can put this in our about page. If I just find my about page. And we add sections with the liquid syntax, with curly braces, percentage, image, background. So you add the name and then a percentage sign again. And now we will have this new section that we just created. Hello, I am image background. Um, so usually my workflow is like this. I create one page with many different sections and for that page I create a CSS file so I can easily 
customize and have like a clear overview of how my project is built. So that's my workflow when working with Shopify as a web developer. I hope you liked it. Also, I'm vlogging about my own business and we use Shopify to sell decorative pillows online. We're showing the entire process of how it is to create a company from coming up with the idea to finding designers and making website like this video. Click here to watch a video of how we got a free office.